I'm skeptical of the claim. I'm skeptical. 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 We are skeptical of claims for the ability of random mutations and natural selection to account for the complexity of life. A careful examination of the evidence for Darwinian theory should be encouraged. Skeptical. 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 Of claims for the ability for the ability of random mutations and natural selection to account for, for the complexity. Complexity. The complexity. The complexity. To account for the complexity of life. Careful examination. 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 Of the evidence for Darwinian theory should be encouraged. In the year 2002, in Cobb County, Georgia, there was a sticker that was placed on the inside cover of the biology textbooks. That sticker simply said that these textbooks contain information on evolution. Evolution is a theory, not a fact, about living organisms, and it should be looked at with an open mind, studied carefully, and critically considered. Here are six supposed evidences for evolution that simply are not good reasons to believe in evolution. Number one, vestigial organs. The problem with this vestigial organ idea is that there are two reasons it cannot prove evolution. Number one, if you did have vestigial organs in your body, that wouldn't prove evolution. You see, evolution has to go from a single cell organism to a human, and you don't need organs that are decaying and atrophying. You need evolution to produce new organs. We should find wings that are almost ready to allow organisms to fly that can't yet fly. We should see things adding information, not losing genetic information. And the second problem with the vestigial organ argument is that that 185 list of vestigial organs, it began to dwindle very rapidly when? when we started looking more closely into them, and it became 180, and then 175, and then, do you know as we look more into the body, we realize that those vestigial organs were very useful, many of them extremely useful. Number two, the idea of homology. We're told that similarity proves ancient ancestry. Well, similarity doesn't prove evolution at all. In fact, you could see things that are similar and you would realize that those similarities are often caused by a common designer. Suppose there were a supernatural intelligent designer and he created a world where many organisms would need to drink the same water, eat the same kinds of food, walk over the same types of terrain. What would happen? Well, obviously, he would use similarities, similar structures, to accomplish his goals. Similarity doesn't prove common ancestry. In fact, similarity argues more for a common creator than anything else. Supposed evidence for evolution number three, the fossil record. Um, I would say that the, the most outstanding the salient points are, first of all, the fossil record. It does not sustain any kind of Darwinian prediction that can be intelligently derived from Darwinian theory, and it doesn't seem to sustain anything else as far as I can see. It's, it's a, a perfectly mystifying record. That's one obvious point. Do you believe in evolution? Yes. Are you a strong believer? Yes. Are you a strong believer? Yep. Uh, yes. Yes. Absolutely. Could you give me some observable evidence that evolution is true. Uh, something I don't have to uh, receive by faith. Yeah. Some observable evidence. I mean, take a look at what happened 65 million years ago. Hang on, I can't. That's 65 million years ago. I believe, yeah, millions of years. So that can't be observed. A scientific method is based on the collection of data through observation and experimentation. Science Daily. Evolution is, is not testable over time. 
go and look at Lenski's experiments of bacteria then. So what did the bacteria become? The bacteria are still bacteria, of course. But that's not Darwinian evolution. That's not a change of kinds, is it? It, it is a change. It is a change in the genetic makeup of the bacteria, which is still bacteria. So what did the bacteria become? Uh, a new kind of bacteria. Still bacteria. There's no change of kinds. And finally, there's the utter absence of laboratory evidence. Random variation, natural selection, we should be able to stop manipulating organisms. When we look at dogs, no matter how far back we go, it's dogs. When we look at bacteria, no matter what we do, they stay bugs. They don't change in their fundamental nature. There seems to be some sort of an inherent species limitation, and we have no good explanation for this in terms of Darwinian theory. We should have far more flexibility, far more plasticity under laboratory conditions than we actually do if Darwinian theory or anything like that were correct. In fact, evolutionist Mark Ridley stated that no real evolutionist, whether gradualist or punctuationist, uses the fossil record as evidence in favor of the theory of evolution as opposed to special creation. Now, why would he say that? Well, he would say that because when you look at the fossil record, you see organisms coming into the fossil record fully formed. You see a stage of stasis where they do not change, and then they go out of the fossil record without evolving into anything else, exactly as the creation model would predict. The fossil record does not prove evolution. Number four, the idea of mutations. We're told that mutations prove you could get a certain single-celled organism to mutate over multiplied millions of years and bring about new information on a grand scale that given enough time, you could get a human being. What's the problem with that line of reasoning? The problem is that mutations don't give us new information. Mutations can only take information that is already available and cause it to decay. Mutations are an example of a loss of genetic information. Let me give you an example. For the last hundred years or more now, scientists have been studying fruit flies. They are great examples of how you can mutate an organism. We have been zapping these fruit flies with radiation and mutating them in chemical ways for more than a hundred years now. The reason that they are so valuable to study is because you can get a new generation every 14 days. We have in that hundred year period the equivalent of what would be millions of years of evolutionary time. And what do you have after all the radiation and mutation? Do you have a fruit fly that has evolved new genetic information? No, you don't. In fact, all you still have is a fruit fly. It hasn't evolved into anything else. Mutations don't prove evolution. That's simply not the mechanism that could get a single-celled organism to a human. Number five, English peppered moths. We're told that English peppered moths provide an example of evolution in action. You see, before the Industrial Revolution, there were two varieties of English peppered moths. One dark colored, one light colored, but the light colored was much higher in ratio than the dark colored. But after the Industrial Revolution, the dark colored became the more prominent color in the light, the fewer in the mix. And we're told that's because birds could see the light colored better, etc. And this was supposedly an example of natural selection. The problem with this example is number one, many of the pictures were faked because the English peppered moths don't often land on tree trunks and the entire idea was flawed in that way. But the second problem was that before the Industrial Revolution, the genetic information in the English peppered moth genome had genetic information for two varieties, light colored and dark colored, and after the genetic information was the same. English peppered moths simply do not prove evolution. And number six, horse evolution. If you were to look in your biology textbooks, you would see that horse evolution is often used as evidence that evolution really occurred. You would see a, a picture of a very small animal, almost looks like a fox or something like that, evolving into modern horse. But this scenario, it's fabricated. It's not true, it was made up. In fact, more than 50 years ago, Dr. George Gaylord Simpson said, the uniform continuous transformation of Hierocotherium into Equus so dear to the hearts of generations of textbook writers never happened in nature. Thank you.